Hello everyone, welcome to Practically's Need Bio class. And today we're going to learn about the morphology and anatomy of the frog. Okay, so now we have for the past few classes, we were learning about the tissue system and the uh, how, what kind of tissues we have, especially the animals. Okay, we were concentrating off more, more on the zoology part in the past few classes, the tissues and different kinds of animals, the anatomy and morphology of different kinds of animal we have discussed. We have discussed about earthworms, we have discussed about cockroaches. Today we're going to discuss about the frog. So today uh, is almost the last class for this chapter. After this, we'll be discussing about the cell and the biomolecules that portion will be going. Okay, so it's the last class uh, for the structural and the functional unit of the animals. Okay, now uh, for the frog, uh, the thing is, uh, there are as it goes similar to the earthworm and the cockroach, like very small, small questions might come from frog for neat. Okay, like they'll be taking one word, what is tympanic membrane or what is nictitating membrane. Okay, so these kind of small, small questions they'll pick for neat and they'll give it for you to answer. These are very easy to answer only if you know what it is. So what you have to do, you have to read by line by line, you take your NCRT book and you read line by line, what is there, what are the special uh, features frogs have, be it for frogs, cockroaches, earthworms, what are the special features they have, how is the digestive system, how is the respiratory system. So these things, both for your boats and for the neat, will be useful. Okay, so let's get started. For that, I'll just talk a little bit about us. Okay, we are from Practically and it's a learning app. From, for, it runs for six, classes 6 to 12. It has a lot of features. It has uh, simula simulations and videos, learning apps, games, a lot of things are there. You should definitely check it out. And you can also follow us on our socials, on Facebook and on Instagram. And do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our videos on YouTube. Okay. So, frog. Now, frog, when we talk about frog, the thing is first we have to see what from what kingdom they are. They are, of course, they are from Animalia. This is an animal. So, frog is an, an Animalia. Phylum is Caudata and subphylum is Vertebrata. Now, Nathostomata, if you remember, we have studied about it because Nathostomata, why? Because they have jaws. Okay, Nathostomata is that section in which the animals, they have jaws. Okay, Tetrapoda, why? Four limbs. Okay, so it's amphibia, frog is of course an amphibia, a frog, toad, salamander, these are all amphibians, they live on water as well as on land, okay, so they are aquatic as well as terrestrial. Order is Anura, family is Ranidae and the genus and species like the scientific name for frog is Rana tigrina, okay, this is like the most common species which we find in India especially this Rana Tigrina. Okay, so that is our frog. This much only you have to remember regarding to what specifications about the frog, the classification details of frog. This is what you have to know. Okay, so what are its features? As I said that frogs are basically amphibians. So they live both on land. Okay, they are terrestrial as as well as aquatic okay and they're known as rana tigrina okay now they are also cold-blooded we you must remember this okay from the first few classes also we have talked about it so they are cold-blooded or poikilotherms or poikilothermic okay so what they do not have is they cannot maintain their body temperature see maintenance of body temperature hot-blooded or uh, animals okay so homeotherms and all that is feature for mammals and birds for animals such as uh, reptiles or amphibians and all they are all cold blooded they cannot they do not constantly they cannot manage their body temperature they cannot regulate their body temperature okay and they have special features like they can camouflage themselves okay they can change their color you can actually see when they are on land and they are going through some plants, grass and all that will, that time it will, they'll have some green color tinge on their body. Now, when they go across on the rocks or something, that time they'll have a brownish body color. Okay, that kind of 
feature what they have that is known as camouflaging or mimicry okay that is what is known as mimicry they can mimic the color mimic the color of what their environment is they can mimic that color so that is known as mimicry okay now they are usually you won't be able to see frogs during peak summer or peak winter okay as i said because they cannot regulate their temperature be it hot be a hot temperature or cold temperature they cannot regulate it okay so it is difficult for them to regulate it you can find n number of frogs during the monsoon okay during rainy season you can find n number of frogs okay but during peak summer and peak winter they won't be able to so what they do is they take shelter in deep burrows and which protects them from very hot temperature very high temperature very low temperature okay so when it's summer okay when they are going for a summer sleep that is known as aestivation okay and when it's winter it's called hibernation so it's summer sleep is aestivation winter sleep is hibernation so when are they uh properly active that is during the monsoon okay during when it rains you can actually hear a lot of frogs croaking okay so that is because they that kind of temperature is what is perfect for them they can actually mate during that season or everything they can do during that kind of season only so monsoon or rainy season is their active season okay so let's see who is here okay hi shrabon i'm fine how are you welcome to the class okay so let's learn more about the frogs uh, so morphology what are their external features and everything we'll discuss the first thing is what you have to learn is that their skin okay their skin is almost when you touch a frog if you are touching for a frog for a class or anything for you have to dissect it can actually feel that their uh, skin is actually very moist and slippery and mucusy okay so their skin always maintains a moist condition this is because uh, frogs actually breathe through their skin okay because they are as i said they are both aquatic and terrestrial when they are aquatic they use their skin to exchange gases or to respire okay so for this reason they have to maintain a smooth and slippery skin so that it's easy to exchange gases easy to exchange gases okay now the color of the dorsal side okay of the body is generally olive green and they have dark irregular spots okay they might uh, different kinds of this depends on what species we are talking about okay rana tigrina basically they have an olive green tinge algae green or olive green and they have some black 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 spots on the ventral side on the uh, another hand okay it's actually very yellowish okay when you turn it it will be yellowish in color okay now it depends some kind of frogs have a brownish tinge okay some kind of frogs have a more greenish tinge it depends on what kind of species you are looking at now the thing is a frog never drinks water but absorbs it through their skin that is why the skin is so moist and mucusy okay because it never drinks water but it absorbs from the skin okay now a frog's body can be divided into two parts they don't have a neck a neck is totally absent especially in the adult frogs okay they do not have a neck they only have two parts they have a head and they have a trunk and the tail is there in tadpoles when they are younger okay but it is absent in mature frog a neck and tail are absent in mature frog okay now uh, this feature where a neck is not absent okay a neck is absent this helps them to swim okay not having a neck actually helps them to jump or to swim okay so that actually helps above the mouth a pair of nostril is present very small ones they have pores or pair of nostrils which helps in the breathing and breathing in breathing out okay and their eyes are bulged they have bulgy eyes if you see frogs 
Okay, first of all, you'll feel a bit yuckish because they have moist skin. Okay, but if you actually see it, they're actually marvelous creatures and they have bulged eyes, okay, because eyes kind of pops out from their head. Okay, they have large eyes and they have something called a nictitating membrane. Remember this, okay, nictitating membrane because it is kind of a, nictitating membrane is kind of a transparent or translucent in nature. Transparent or translucent okay and what it actually protects them they when, when they're swimming okay so they have to look where they're going right so they have this nictitating membrane which covers it so the water does not enter the eyes and they can still swim okay so this nictitating membrane actually helps in swimming Okay. Now, now on the either side of the eyes, they have a membrane called tympanum or the tympanic membrane. What it is, tympanic membranes are basically kind of ears. Okay. Tympanic membrane. They actually work as ears. Why they do not have external ears, okay, a pinna which we have, this is one of the pinna. Now that they don't have, okay, they only have a membrane which helps in the hearing and everything, okay. So works as ears, okay. Pinna not present, okay. The fore limbs, hind limbs help in swimming, walking, leaping, burrowing. So the they have a, you must have seen that the hind limbs are very long. If you actually extend it, okay, it's very long, right? Because they jump, okay, and this helps in the swimming, walking, leaping, burrowing, everything. This kind of limbs help. Okay, now the hind limbs end in five digits, and they have large muscular muscular and are larger than the whole limbs okay and they have webbed digits why right? they have webbed digits okay so how does a web digit look see here so so this is how so if the, these are their fingers or something okay digit. so there is a membrane kind of a thing this kind of digits are known as web digits they have a membrane kind of a thing in between why because it is easier for them to swim okay easier to swim okay and they exhibit sexual dimorphism as in they have proper of male frog and a female frog and the male frog has different characteristics than the female frog they have both of them have different characteristics, okay. How the male frog has a proper, like a, can be distinguished by presence of sound producing vocal sacs and a copulatory pad, okay. So what is the difference? They have a different sound, okay. And they have male frogs have something called a copulatory pad, which is not present in the female frogs, okay. Copulatory pad okay so the, where is it present on the first digit of the four limbs for clasping the female for mating reasons they have the first digit of the four limbs they have a copulatory pad to clasp the female this thing is not available in the female frogs okay now digestive system now we come to the anatomy we'll discuss about the digestive system We'll discuss about the respiratory system, the nervous system, the reproductive system. Okay, so first we'll start with the digestive system. Now, the digestive system consists of elementary canal and some glands. So there is the elementary canal and the digestive glands, and the canal is actually very short because frogs are carnivores, and hence the length of the intestine is reduced but complete. So they are carnivores. 
they're not omnivores or herbivores they do not depend on plants or weeds and all they totally depend on the insects okay so they have a small alimentary canal and which starts from the mouth to the cloaca cloaca is basically the opening the opening for waste okay now elementary canal the first thing as i said it starts from the mouth to the cloaca let's see if somebody else has joined hi enosh welcome to the class okay so now okay so the first thing is mouth so the mouth opens into a buccal cavity that leads to the esophagus through pharynx so buccal cavity basically means the top part of a mouth okay so they have a proper mouth cavity that catches the like that if the food is caught food is caught with the help of the tongue okay they catch insects you might have seen in national geographic channel or discovery channel if you see they keep running this kind of videos where frogs are how frogs eat or anything okay so what they do they catch with their tongue they catch the insects okay now that kind of insect to process it it starts with the mouth from the mouth cavity that is the buccal cavity now from there it goes to the pharynx okay and then through the esophagus it re reaches the digestive other digestive part, part so from mouth as i said it goes to the esophagus which is short due to absence of neck and the tube it opens to the stomach esophagus is basically a food pipe kind of a thing okay so see here in the diagram you can actually see here just a small esophagus they don't have a neck no so it won't be very how are our esophagus big because we have long necks okay but the neck is totally absent in frogs so they have a smaller one now from mouth it goes to the esophagus and then to the stomach now stomach lies on the left side of the body cavity it is on one side okay made up of an anterior cardiac stomach and a posterior pyloric stomach so the anterior part is the cardiac stomach and the posterior part is the pyloric stomach and finally it reaches the intestine which is the longest part of the elementary canal and divided into the duodenum ileum and rectum okay now these are the parts of the elementary canal that is mouth from where it enters esophagus it goes there's a pipe stomach where the digestive glands and everything have like the uh, processing takes place and finally the intestine after which if there are any waste products it goes out and finally there are some glands also like in the liver that secretes bile okay liver is always there and there is a pancreas which actually produces the digestive juices they need juices right to process the food whatever they are eating they have to process it that kind of juices are produced by the pancreas so what actually help happens in the digestive system how is the digestive system working so what happens now the suppose the frog has actually caught the insect okay now now they have a bilobed tongue okay they have a bilobed tongue which actually catches the insect and they swallow it whole okay they'll just swallow it whole they don't have teeth and all that is not that they're not chewing it they just swallow it now first thing which happens is the mouth cavity after that it passes through the esophagus and reaches the stomach right so what happens the digestion of the food takes place by the action of the hcl and the gastric juices secreted from the walls of the stomach so it has reached the stomach then stomach has their own juices the which is the hydrochloric acid and the ju other gastric juices they have so that first processes it now this is the partially here in the stomach it is only partially processed okay now this processing thing okay this processed food is known as actually chyme 
Okay, remember this word kind and it is passed from stomach to the duodenum. Okay, first part, duodenum, ileum, rectum. The first part is duodenum. Okay, now what happens in the duodenum? Duodenum actually receives some part of bile, okay, from the liver. It passes, it receives bile from gall gallbladder and pancreatic juices from pancreas through the common bile duct. So now duodenum, they are not producing their own juices. Duodenum collects juices from the other parts of the body, from the liver and the pancreas. They have their own juices. Now, what do these two juices do? It emulsifies the fat and digests the carbohydrates and proteins. So, the chyme is basically a processed food. So, what happens? The chyme has, because it is processed, it does not have complex carbohydrates or complex fats. Okay, These are a bit simpler ones. Now, to break, further break these simpler ones, okay, simpler constituents, the duodenum processes it with the help of bile and pancreatic juices. Okay. Now, the final digestion takes place in the intestine. Digested food is absorbed by numerous finger-like holes in the inner wall of the intestine called the villi and the microvilli. Finally, what happens? It is digested inside the intestine. With the help of some finger like holes in the inner walls, there are lots of holes in the intestine, no? So, it is uh, microvilli and all are hair like structures, they are okay, they help in the final digestion of the food. Now, of course, there will be some undigested part, right? Every uh, organism will not totally digest the food at all, okay? There will always be some rejected food which is not digested or something. That rejected food passes out from the rectum through an opening called cloaca. So, from the rectum to opening called cloaca. Okay, as I said, it starts from the mouth and goes till cloaca. So, finally, whatever is not digested, okay, that will reach from the rectum to and the opening is known as basically opening is known as cloaca. The cloaca will reject out the undigested food. Okay. Now the respiratory system. Now before talking about the respiratory system, you just should need to know that the uh, frog has two kinds of respiratory system. Okay. The first thing is that since they are amphibians, okay, they live both on water and on land, okay. So, when you are on land, you cannot use your water-based respiratory system. When you are in water, you cannot use your land-based respiratory system, okay. So, they need both kinds. Now, what are these in the water? They actually use the skin, okay. So, it's very simple. It's not as complicated as it sounds in the water. They use the skin to respire. Okay. And on the land, they use lungs. Okay. So, the first thing in water, if they are on water, the skin acts as an aquatic respiratory organ. So, what happens? The skin only, it takes up the oxygen, okay, in the water and it gives out the carbon dioxide. Okay, so you can see here in this diagram, it is taking in oxygen and it is giving out carbon dioxide. That is only in the water. Now it comes to when it comes to land, okay, that time there is kind of a respiratory system. The major portion is done by lungs only, but it starts with the buccal cavity. Sometimes the skin is also involved, but mostly it is the lungs which is doing the work. And this whole system is known as the pulmonary respiration. Wherever we talk about lungs, that time only we have to talk about the pulmonary respiration. So, what happens? It has a nostril, as I said in the first part only when we were discussing morphology. It has a nostril, small nostrils it has. So, it will take the oxygen. Okay, I'm talking about land. So, it will take the oxygen. It passes through the mouth cavity or the buccal cavity and it reaches the lungs. Lungs are a bit shorter, kind of, but elongated, but smaller, okay, and 
the lungs only processes the oxygen and passes it to the rest part of the body. Okay. Same way the carbon dioxide is taken out from the nostril, from the mouth cavity to the nostrils and it is ejected out. Okay. So, the lungs are a pair of elongated pink colored sac like structures okay, and it is present in the chest cavity, the upper part of the trunk or the upper part is the thorax. Okay. So, that is where the lungs are present. So, as I said, it takes from the nostril, okay, oxygen is taken by the nostril. It passes from the buccal cavity or the mouth cavity and directly goes into the lungs. Lungs will again make sure that the oxygen reaches to different parts of the body and similarly the carbon dioxide is also taken out. As the oxygen goes in, the carbon dioxide is taken out. Okay. So, during activation and hibernation, gaseous exchange takes place through the skin. So, when they are in hibernation, when they are in their summer sleep or their winter sleep, okay, their lungs aren't working. At that time, it is the skin, okay, although if they are on the land, okay, they, it is the skin which is working that time. So, hibernation and estivation during that time, skin helps in respiration. Okay. So, if anyone has any doubts, please just ask. Okay. If you have any doubts, please ask in the comment section and I will try to help you out. Okay. So, now the vascular system. Okay. In the previous class, we were discussing about how cockroach has an open vascular system. Okay. They discussed how it has, does not have a proper, like a heart and it does not have proper capillaries and veins and arteries and all that it doesn't have okay so what it has it actually has some directly they the uh, uh, blood will flush all the organs okay blood the blood actually just gets flushed on the organs and that is from where the nutrients come okay that happens in the cockroach but when it comes to amphibians like frogs they have a close type and has a developed heart, blood vessels and blood. Okay. That, that time in cockroach we had hemocele and hemolymph and everything. But here it is properly, a, although it is not, the heart is not as developed as human heart with four chambers, four developed chambers and all. But it has a heart with three chambers. It has proper blood vessels and it has proper blood. Okay. Now, frogs have a lymphatic system also, which is made up of lymph, lymph channels and lymph nodes. So, they have, they have proper lymph, lymph channels and it's kind of a developed vascular system. It's not as underdeveloped as the insects. Okay. And the heart is a muscular structure situated in the upper part of the body cavity in the thorax. Okay. And it has three chambers, two atria and one ventricle. In human heart, it is two atria and two ventricles, okay, and it is divided by a septum. Here it is two atria, here you can see. This is the right atrium, this is the left atrium, and there is a ventricle. When it's a human, then there will be a division here, and there will be a right ventricle and a left ventricle, but here it is just one ventricle, okay. And it's triangular structure called sinus venosus joins the right atrium okay it receives blood through the major veins called vena cava here this triangular structure is the vena cava now the ventricle ventricle opens into a sac like conus arterius on the ventral side of the heart so in the ventral side of the heart there is an open sac like structure called conus arteriosus okay the blood from the heart is now actually carried from all to all the parts of the body, body through the arteries or the arterial system. And the veins collect blood from the different part okay, to the heart and forms the venous system. So, arteries carry 
blood to different parts of body and just the opposite thing is done by veins it carries it back Okay, it carries the blood back from the different for the processing of the blood it carries it back from the different parts of the body okay now this is how actually the whole system whole nervous system actually looks here is the veins this side you can actually see the veins this is not how it veins or arteries are not like left and right it's not like that it's just to help you understand how it looks okay so there are different kinds of veins okay there are different kinds of arteries arteries has the oxygenated blood and everything it's taking to different parts of the body is kidneys and different digestive system and all veins on the other hand is taking it back taking the deoxygenated back uh, uh, blood back to the heart okay so the veins part is blue in color and the arteries are red in color okay so special venous connection between the liver and the intestine as well as the kidney and lower parts of the body are present in the frogs okay so there is a special venous system which is working between the liver and the intestine and the kidneys etc so the liver one is known as the hepatic portal system and the kidney one is known as the renal portal system okay so this is like a system where the blood is carried and then it is carried back so for the liver it is known as the hepatic system and for the ren kidney one it is known as the renal portal system the blood is composed now what about the blood how is the blood till now we have seen that like the blood is like hemocyl it's not proper and it's not developed here the blood is almost like how it is in mammals blood is composed of plasma and cells cells are actually red blood cells they have rbcs or erythrocytes okay and wbcs okay leukocytes platelets so they have rbcs and wbcs also okay rbcs are nucleated oval biconvex and contain red colored pigment pigment namely hemoglobin they also have hemoglobin also nucleated is not in humans we don't have nucleus in the rbcs only in mammals if we are talking about mammals only at camel we can see nucleated but we here in frogs the rbcs are nucleated somewhat like this we look okay and the lymph is different from blood it lacks a few proteins and the rbcs so it's in a limb the color is different and it does not have some kind of proteins and they don't have rbcs the blood carries nutrients gases water to respective sites through circulation and the circulation blood is achieved by pumping of the heart action as usual the pumping heart pumps the blood okay due to which the this thing the arteries can take to to the different organs and everything this uh, function where the arteries are taking blood to different parts of the body and the veins are taking it back to the heart okay so this function is controlled by the heart that pumping of heart is how it is controlled okay hi pavan welcome to the class okay so now we'll discuss about the excretory system okay so excretory system whenever you learn about like hear the word excretory system the first thing you can actually hear is the kidneys now this it like here in frogs it is properly a well developed excretory system they have okay they have proper kidneys in sorry in uh, this thing in different kinds of like in cockroach we saw malpighian tubules and everything here we have proper kidneys okay so what is there apart from kidneys there are pair of kidneys here you can see these are the kidneys okay there are ureters here see tube like structure is the ureter 
cloaca okay this is just now we in the digestive system we learned cloaca is from where the products the rejected products the excretory products or uh, nitrogenous products actually go away so there's cloaca and the urinary bladder this is where the urine is actually stored or right? okay so kidneys are how kidneys are dark compact red and bean like structures situated a little posterior in the body cavity on both sides of the vertebral column it is on the both sides of the vertebral column and it's at the posterior lower side okay each kidney is composed of several structural and functional units called the uriniferous tubules or the nephrons so the urine the units which actually help in the excretory system the units are called nephrons okay two ureters emerge from the kidneys in the male frogs and the ureters act as the urogenital duct which opens into the cloaca the taking up of the excretory products okay that the transfer of the products is done by the ureter okay in female the ureters and the oviduct open separately in the cloaca the female they have another thing called the oviduct okay which is their part of the reproductive system so they have a separate way to the cloaca which is the opening okay a thin walled urinary bladder is present ventral to the rectum which also opens in the cloaca now the urinary bladder because it is like a storage area no so they have a storage area which also opens to the cloaca so what you know males have two openings to cloaca and the females have three just to the cloaca cloaca is one opening only but towards the cloaca males have three sorry males have two and the females have three okay now the frog actually excretes urea okay mostly whatever their products waste products are they are actually urea based this is why they are known as ureteric ureteric animal okay and excretory wastes are carried by the blood into the kidney where the blood is actually like taken away and the wastes are actually rejected through the cloaca so the kidney the kidney functions and the everything they process the blood the, whatever is required they push it back into the body and whatever is not required they push it out through the cloaca let's see there are other people also hi neha hello welcome to the class okay control and coordination so control and coordination what it means it not, not only means the nervous system or anything whatever the functions whatever is happening in the uh, body of the frog okay that is defined by two functions okay the first first is the nervous system or the neural system and there is the endocrine system okay we know about this because endocrine system is what which the Uh, endocrine system helps in the hormones the production of hormones now hormones help in a lot of things hormone helps in he the growth hormone helps in the mating okay the different kinds of functions are controlled by the hormones okay now hormones are what they are produced through with the help of the like to the production and the transfer and everything is controlled by the endocrine system okay the so first is the endocrine system chemical coordination of various organs of the body is achieved by hormones okay as i said so endocrine system which control the hormones okay and there are prominent endocrine glands which are pituitary gland thyroid gland parathyroid gland thymus pineal body pancreatic islets adrenals gonads so they have proper they have properly developed endocrine system okay which gives produ produces a lot of hormones okay which produces hormones 
now these hormones in turn they do all the functions okay growth and the mating and everything is done with the help of these functions only these hormones only so body functions okay that is the endocrine system now there is another system called the nervous system and the nervous system here is divided into three parts there is the cns okay or the central nervous system that is the brain and the spinal cord okay there is the pns that is the cranial nerves every spinal nerves all the nerves and everything okay and there is the ans that is the autonomic nervous system all the extra whatever there is the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nerves and everything that is the ans the main one is the cns only because it's the brain the main function okay main control and coordination is done with the cns only because it's the central the brain and the spinal cord this is how they work this is how they move okay so the main one is the cns pns and ans are the extra ones so the first is the cns as i said so it is made up of the brain which is enclosed in a bony structure called the brain box so there is a brain okay this is how it looks okay the brain this is how it looks and it's divided into a fore brain mid brain and a hind brain so there is a fore brain okay this part is the fore brain there is a mid brain see here the mid brain and there is the hind brain okay and from here the spinal cord starts in it now the fore brain is the main thing okay why because it includes the olfactory lobes that is the smelling okay the paired cerebral hemispheres the unpaired diencephalon okay so these structures are all in the fore brain okay all the functions most functions most functions are handled in the fore brain now the brain mid brain is characterized by the pair of optic lobes and the hind brain consists of the cerebellum and medulla oblongata okay so the optic nerve here you can see that is controlled by the mid brain okay and the hind brain consists of the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata okay now what happens the medulla oblongata passes out through the foramen magnum and continues into a spinal cord okay so from here as you as you know this is the hind brain from here it goes into the spinal cord okay which is the now the spinal cord since they are vertebrata okay so the spinal cord is enclosed in the vertebral column enclosed in the vertebral column because they are in the vertebrata they are in the group of vertebrata so we have the spinal cord which is enclosed by the vertebral column so these this is basically how the central nervous system the brain actually looks now as i said there are three kinds there is a cns pns and ans there is also the pns and the ans pns is basically the extra nerves okay 10 pair of cranial nerves from the brain and spinal nerves 10 pair of spinal nerves from the spinal cord so they have extra 10 from the brain they have some 10 nerves going okay from the, to the different parts of the body that is the pns okay from 10 from the brain and 10 from the spinal cord those 20 nerves are the pns what is remaining that is the ans that is system of nerve fibers and ganglia which controls coordinates the involuntary activities of the visceral organ such as the nictitating membrane and all extra activities are the controlled by the autonomic nervous system okay so the main thing as you know the main thing the brain and the spinal cord is the cns that is the main thing the main major activities are controlled by that tns are just those 20 nerves 10 from brain 10 from spinal cord and ans are the extra visceral organs whatever they have extra organs okay that is controlled by the autonomic nervous system okay 
Now, what sense organs do they have? Of course, they need to have sense organs, They're living beings, right? They need to have sense organs. So, frog has different types of sense organs, organs of touch, okay, that is the sensory papillae, taste buds, nasal epithelium, vision, hearing, okay. So, we have these kind of sense organs. Okay, see, this is the tympanic membrane, this is the ear nictitating membrane this is the extra covering which they have okay there's the nostrils two nostrils they have okay they have the tongue it's the bilobed tongue they have catch the insects okay now out of these eyes internal ears are well organized structures okay these are all well developed although they do not have an external ear but the internal ears work very well okay and the rest are cellular aggregations around nerve endings like the taste buds Okay, the touch, these are all, they are just cellular aggregation of the nerve endings, whatever, whatever the nerve are ending, they have, they are the aggregations, okay. Eyes in frog are pair of spherical structures situated in the orbit skull. They have those bulged eyes, no? So, they are situated on the orbit of the skull. That is why they are bulged. They are not inside, okay, they are placed on the outside, on the orbit. That is why they have bulged eyes. Okay. These eyes are simple eyes. Okay. They have just one unit. As you know, external ear is absent in frogs and only a tympanum can be seen. Ear is an organ of hearing as well as balancing. That is there. Even for us, we have the eustachian tube to maintain the balance in our body. For same thing, the tympanic membrane, they hear, they are used for hearing also as well as the balance in the body is maintained by the tympanic membrane only. Okay. Finally, the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system we talk about. Huh? These, as I said, they are properly dimorphic in nature. They have proper different characters in the female and the male. Male have a voice, of heavier voice and they have the copulating pad. They have different kind of a reproductive system. The females have different kind of reproductive system and everything. Okay. So, for the male reproductive system, they have two testes, okay, which is attached to the kidneys, several vasa efferentia and two urogenital ducts. Okay. So, now they don't have copulatory organs and all. They have external and all. They don't have. Okay. So, testes is what from where the, that is the unit of reproduction for males. It's elongated, ovoid, light yellow body attached to the kidney, okay, uh, by double fold of the peritoneum called mesorchium. This is how it looks, okay, here it is, the testes, okay, two testes, that is testes. Now, what is the vasa efferentia? 10 to 12 fine tubules, okay, here, these tubules, can you see? These are the vasa efferentia that connects the testis to the kidney. Because these testis are attached to the kidney, somehow they have to attach, no? So, the vasa efferentia makes sure that the testis is connected to the kidney. They enter the kidneys on, the right, on their side and open into the Bidder's canal. Finally, it can, communicates with the urogenital duct. Okay. So, they to connect, they enter into the Bidder's canal. And with that, they connect with the duct and everything. Now, there is a urogen urinogenital duct. In the male, it is both a urinary as well as the sperm duct. So, this duct you can see, no? Okay. This works as the ureter also and it is also the urinogenital duct. Okay. So, it each run ducts, ducts posteriorly and opens into the cloaca. As I said, two, two things in males, there are two uh, pathways which connect into the cloaca. The first is the ureter and the second one is the urinary bladder. Here you can see the urinary bladder is opening into the cloaca and there is also the urinogenital duct which is opening into the cloaca. Okay. So, you this urinogenital, they carry both the urine and the sperm. Both of them are carried by the urinogenital duct. Okay. And then there is the cloaca that is used to 
past the fecal matter, urine, sperms, etc. Everything. It is the urine, the cloaca actually rejects everything, starting from nitrogenous materials, the waste materials, the fecal matter, the sperms. Everything is given out by the cloaca. So this is how the male reproductive system looks. The female reproductive system is again a bit different, okay. So they have, they don't have the testes and the uh, urinogenital duct and everything they don't have, okay. So what they have is, you have instead of testes, they have ovaries and instead of the urinogenital duct, they have the oviduct, okay. So ovaries, these are also uh, like around the kidneys only they are, but they are not, not connected to the kidneys. There it was connected to the kidneys because it was, there is the vasa efferentia is there. But here there is no vasa efferentia. So, there is no connection, okay. So, these are paired irregular shaped lobulated structures located near the kidneys. They are just located near the kidneys, not around it. Each ovary contains innumerable dark around ova in different stages of development. So, they have that ova or the egg they have in their ovaries. When ripe, the ova are shed into the body cavity from where they move into oviducts. So, when they have grown, they have, they are matured, the egg are matured, it is grown properly. They come to the oviduct and they are passed down. Now, what happens in the oviduct paired long white glandular coil tubes lying on each either either side of the body cavity? Okay. Posterior end of the ducts are broad called ov sacs, which open dorsally into the cloaca superior. So this is the ovary. Okay. Now this this is the oviduct. This zigzag kind of thing is the oviduct. And when it is opening into the cloaca, it is known as the OV sac. Okay. Now, OV sac, why? Because eggs are there for some time. Eggs live there for some duration. Okay. And the mature female frog can lay up to 2500 to 3000 ovas at one time. So, they can lay up to 2500 to 3000 eggs at one time. This is during mating season. What they do? They can lay up to 2500 to 3000 eggs at one time. Okay. Now, when they are ready, they reach into the ov, OV sac. Okay. And when they find that they might meet or something, they come out from the cloacal aperture. So, what happens? Now, the fertilization is external, okay. It is not internal, it is external and takes place in the water. So, the first, the mating thing happens in the water, okay. Now, development involves a larval stage and called tadpole and the tadpole undergoes the metamorphosis. We know, okay. So, this whole phase is called metamorphosis okay so this is an adult frog it has given eggs okay now eggs what happens they become embryo and they grow after fertilization after fertilization with the sperms of the uh, male frog okay they become embryo and after that they become tadpoles okay after some time, these tadpoles, they start bearing gills, okay, the tadpoles have gills, okay, because they are basically living inside water. So, they have gills and they have tails, okay. Finally, after some time from there, they grow some legs, okay, and they have, they still have the tail. Finally, after some time, when they are after their body is grown, the digestive system, everything comes, everything is grown properly, everything is developed. They have the front legs also. First the hind legs come and then the front legs come and when it is ready to jump outside the water, the tail becomes shorter and by the time it goes off, by the time it reaches the land, okay, the tail goes away. 
Okay, in the adult frog, you can neither see your neck nor see your tail or anything is not there. Okay, so this whole process where it keeps changing its uh, features, keeps changing its body structures, that is known as metamorphosis. Okay, and frog is one thing which actually keeps balance. Okay, nature's balance. Why? Right? Because what happens is these animals actually eat a lot of insects now these insects if frogs are not there these insects or mosquitoes or anything they can actually cause a lot of harm okay they can actually cause a lot of problems they can actually cause a lot of diseases okay insects right they can cause diseases so frogs actually eat these kinds of insects mosquitoes and all and they maintain the balance so that the balance is not gone and there's not a lot of insects in our environment they don't hamper our environment so it, that is why frogs are so important when it comes to the food pyramid the nature pyramid and everything frogs are very important because they are basically whatever pests we have in our environment that is controlled by the frog okay so that's it if you have any doubts okay i'll be discussing some question but if you have any doubts regarding the frogs Okay, you can definitely put it in the chat box and I can answer it. Okay. Okay. So, which of the following is absent in a female frog? As I said, these are time. Okay, they are dimorphic in nature. Frogs are dimorphic in nature. There are some features which are available in female frogs and some feature which is available in male frogs. Okay. So, webbed feet is there, okay, webbed feet is there in both female and male frogs. Tympanum is also there, tympanum is the ears, okay, internal ears. But copulatory pads are not present in female frogs. Copulatory pads are made in the male frogs to class the female frog during mating season. Okay, so copulatory pads are the ones which are not available in the female frog. Okay, choose the incorrect statement. This is the we have to choose the wrong statement. Okay, keep reading the questions whenever you are answering something always read the question properly so the incorrect statement vascular system of frog is closed type exactly it is not open it is closed type frogs have four chambered heart no they have three chambered heart okay so there are two atria and one ventricle Okay, during astivation, that is the summer sleep and hibernation, skin acts as the respiratory organ, that is true. All statements are correct, no. Okay, so the answer is frogs have four chambered heart. Okay, because they have only three. Okay, which membrane protects the eyes from the frog in water? Tympanum, no, this is the ear. Skin, no. Sebaceous, no. Nictitating membrane, okay. This is the transparent or the translucent membrane. Mostly used during swimming. Okay, see, next, okay, next. The main function of the skin of frog is exchange of respiratory gases, storage of fat, storage of energy, converting light to vitamin D. No, it is for the exchange of gases. Why? That is why they have very slimy mucus 
moist skin. Okay, that is why, that is because they are using the skin to exchange gases. Okay, so that is the main function of the skin of a frog. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining. Thank you for coming to the class. If you have any doubts, you can always ask me in the next class. Okay, the classes are there. Mostly it runs from Monday, Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 7 o'clock. You're always welcome to join. We are, right now we are discussing about the my major chapters in the 11th standard for meat okay the next class will be we i'll be starting about cell we'll be learning about prokaryotic cell eukaryotic cell the organelles cell theory and all okay so don't forget to join us and do like share and subscribe to our videos okay let's see you guys later bye bye and good night